Welcome back to GMA3. As President Biden embarks on a diplomatic trip to Europe, a bipartisan group of senators has recently returned from a fact-finding mission in that region. This delegation traveled to Poland and Germany, where it witnessed firsthand the impact of Russia's war with Ukraine. And here to discuss one of the members of that group, Kansas Senator Roger Marshall. Senator Marshall, good to have you here with us. And uh, I guess what? We've been seeing the pictures here. We see the reporting from here. You were as well, but you ended up on the ground. What stood out to you there that you maybe didn't get the full picture of uh, from watching it in news reports? Yeah, seeing something firsthand is always just more impactful. I've done medical mission work all around the world, and to see the humanity of the Polish people, I think, was just so incredible. They processed almost a million uh, refugees. That they welcomed them into their homes. They bought them plane tickets, train tickets. Uh, just done an amazing job there. But of course, of course, we also saw the worst in mankind, and that's the war, the horror created by Vladimir Putin. So talking to the people that are living through it, uh, most of the refugees were, were women with two or three children. Maybe they had an elderly parent with them. And just to hear them relive their stories and, and how painful it was to leave their husbands behind and that they wanted to go home, I think that was just so impressive to me that the Ukrainians are going to fight to the death here and that there's actually a path to victory if America will step up, if Europe will step up. Yes, the Ukrainians certainly need our help. President Biden there in Europe meeting with allies, discussing the international uh, action that needs to continue and to take place. You say the president has a simple mission. What is it? What does he need to do? Yeah, we, we have to lead. Look, uh, much is given, much is required. America is still the leader of the free world. It's time for us to start acting like it on the ground what the people from Ukraine and Poland told told us was is that the White House and the Pentagon was preventing uh, other allies from giving weapons to the Ukrainians that they were softly slow walking this that there wasn't enough faith in the Ukrainian people so the president has to lead and really we need to push NATO forward America has a hundred and two thousand of our finest on the front line right now NATO troops need to replace those the president needs to lead and the great news is Germany is engaged They're fully engaged, uh, you know, again, landing there in Germany. Uh, they are fully uh, in, in support of this transatlantic partnership again. Europe needs to lead. Financially, they can put so much more of a hurt on Russia than the United States can. Well, uh, Senator, let's turn back here to all eyes on the confirmation hearings past couple of days this week. Uh, Judge Katanji Brown uh, Jackson, of course, uh, she was before the committee and was voted on in the past year, within the past year, for the uh, U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, the, considered the most second most important uh, court in the land. You didn't vote for her last time. Uh, should we, uh, fair to assume, you're not going to vote for her confirmation this time either? Well, look, she's got a, a tall hill to climb here, uh, but certainly appreciate the, the civility of, of this particular hearing. I think that Senator Grassley and, and uh, Senator Durbin have done a great job. I think the questions have been fair. She presented herself well. But look, I think all of us have a big concern that she's soft on crime, but, but we'll do our best to, uh, to give this process the respect that it, that it deserves. Uh, but again, is there anything that you're going to see this time that's going to cause you to vote for her because you didn't vote for her last time? So is it is fair to say you're, you're a no? <laughs> Look, I'm not going to make an announcement uh, today. I, I expect us to make one this week. Uh, I'm very much you know, the physician that wants to sleep on all the evidence presented. I want to know uh, just not your blood pressure. I want to know your oxygen saturation and the chest x-rays too. So we're giving a once more over all this. We're talking about it uh, in conference a lot. And uh, like I said, she's got a really uh, tall road to climb here. Uh, Senator, I want to ask you about a little controversy. You uh, gave some participants a tour of the U.S. Capitol. Truckers on that cross-country protest against COVID mandates. They're known as the People's Convoy. Some people that ra say that raised some security concerns. I want to get your response uh, to that and why you chose to give them a tour. My goodness, I've given, I bet, nearly 100 tours of the Capitol. We even went the extra step and called the Capitol Police to make sure it was okay. Uh, these are people that I'd met four or five days before at a rally in Salina, Kansas. And I just think it was the right thing, thing to do. And I gave, you know, kids a, a tour yesterday as well. Tours are happening. I, I just think it's just horrible to discriminate against this group of people because maybe they don't look like some, some other people. These are intelligent people. They're God-fearing people. Um, maybe they've got more 
tattoos than I've got. Maybe their hair is longer. Why are we discriminating against this group? These, this was peace-loving uh, folks that were here so just wanting to exercise their First Amendment. Couldn't have been a more peaceful group. I think that's a horrible insinuation and very condescending. Well, Kansas Senator Roger Marshall, we appreciate your time today. Thanks for being with us.